every age is new and brings fresh access to the gospel. Our age is a very unique one and is a most interesting and significant time for restoration thought. There is a sense of impending change. Wherever I travel, people seem to be asking many of the same questions. What's going on in the churches of Christ? Why is there so much uneasiness? Are we shifting? Are we perhaps disintegrating? So I am led to ask, is there a future to our religious past? The Restoration Movement has a long prehistory and a distinct heritage on the American religious scene. The positive aspects of our legacy are several. Clearly, however, changes are occurring in the churches of Christ. Some are positive, some are not. These changes are creating genuine concern among many people. Changes always tend to create a certain anxiety, among conservative people especially. But one must remember that changes have been occurring in this movement all along. Change is normal. That doesn't make it any easier for conservative people to accept, whether political, economic, social, or religious. And perhaps there is legitimate reason to be uneasy with change, for fear that with change, time-honored customs, ways, and values might be dismissed. Regardless, however, of how one feels about change, it happens. And among the churches of Christ, it has been happening for some time. Although a certain amount of fog shrouds the roads, a few components of this confusion can be seen clearly. For one thing, the Restoration Movement is rooted historically in a rational approach to religion based upon a Lockean common sense philosophy. However, for over a century, the philosophical basis of our thought has been merely an unaddressed legacy for most of us. One major change attributable to this philosophical neglect has been a recent and fairly widespread abandonment of fundamentalist legalism and the acceptance in certain quarters of what I shall call a pietistic existentialism. Frontier revivalism and a sectarian mentality pushed most churches of Christ into a rigorous fundamentalism through much of the past century and a half, during which a variety of issues came to dominate faith and practice. With the rise of graduate education and religion in the mid-20th century, however, the growing rational base of religious inquiry resulted in a momentous shift to conservative rationalism among many, securing a much needed perspective and balance. As fundamentalism receded further toward the margin, a few pseudo scholarly attempts to preserve preconceived constructs carried rationalistic legalism to unacceptable extremes. The spirit was dismissed from concern with a curious argument that the spirit works only through the written word. The abandonment of this fundamentalist extremism has culminated now in a fairly predictable reaction toward an opposite extreme. For the past several years, there has been a noticeable shift in certain quarters from the rational analytical to an emotional base of operation in our churches. Not really the result of a calculated effort. It has come about almost imperceptibly as part of a wide-scale replacement of fundamentalist extremism with a quest for spiritual meaningfulness. 
conservative rationalism is disregarded by these as emotionally unsatisfying. And this acceptance by many of pietistic existentialism results, I think, from participation in the wider American experience with its strong emphasis upon postmodernism. But make no mistake, this fundamental philosophical shift away from the rational analytical toward the pietistic existential plays no small part in current confusion among many about who we are as a people. It is lamentable that many continue to perceive philosophy as a useless pursuit. You see, one does not have the option of not having a philosophy. It may be better or poorer, but a philosophy will exist. No movement can be powerful, which is philosophically uncertain. Very likely, fundamentalist extremism will linger as mere noisy marginalia. But will conservative rationalism withstand the challenge from pietistic existentialism? It is my opinion that to attempt restoration from an emotional rather than a rational base would be suicidal.